Achtung, Achtung, hier ist Alex Wright and you are listening to Chat Grabble and Cheat Pops with JB and Chris Dredd. Enjoy it or I come over and kick your ass. Welcome everyone to a very special episode of Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. I am Chris Dredd. I'm here with my main man, JB. And right now, this episode is very specific. It is very, fo- oh, it's very focused. There's my phone. Um, probably someone giving so, me shit. Someone else has been suspended. Uh, it's, it's, um, <laughs> It's someone giving me shit about the meme I just posted on Facebook. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, this is a very special episode. It is specifically about AEW. It is specifically about, you know, that's what I'm saying, bro. It is mind blown. It's a it's a, it's a mind blown. But the thing is, you and I and others have been speaking for a little while about the ongoing turmoil backstage and the undertones of chaos that's been going on. And uh, apparently we were told to shut up. It's a work. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Well, some some other things were obviously a work, but this latest piece of hilarity mm. um, is not. So before we dive in, and we're going to dive in head first, belly flop, the whole thing. You know what to do. If you haven't done it by now, it's down there. Slap it around. Slap the bell. You've seen, you've seen the latest videos we've been putting up from our amazing trip to Cardiff. So much fun. I mean, even the, even the picture with the original bro at two in the morning, when one of us is drunk, (laughs) guilty, Um, and one, yeah, one isn't. He's drinking his bubble tea right now. So, yeah, you would have seen some of our stuff from the weekend. I really hope you enjoyed as much as we had fun making these videos, watching wrestling, and then getting to the next part, which was was the Sunday, where you, you know, try and watch more wrestling and Monday becomes chaos. It's it's become absolute carnage. And this the the state of all elite wrestling at the moment is and and I'll be honest, the show that I just watched, the dynamite from last night, wasn't yeah, actually it. that bad. It, A couple of good matches. I, I wouldn't Yeah. We can we can gloss over dynamite afterwards if you like. Um yeah. But we need to we need to get into the the heavy business, and the heavy business is CM Punk. It's CM Punk. It's the EVPs. It is. It even goes as far back probably as Cody Rhodes doing the off. Well, there's so many so many pieces of this <laughs> puzzle, or you know, even so many pieces on the chessboard. Yeah. That yeah, you know, we we don't have all the facts. Obviously, we don't have hell. We don't even have the timeline set straight. You know, it's all over the place. That's right. You know, there's videos out there. There's one in particular where the Bucks are talking about signing or signing CM Punk, and Cody and Kenny Omega on the other side just sort of, you know, l- rolling their eyes to the sides because I imagine Cody knows what it's like. Mm-hmm. And Kenny probably just didn't want him there anyway. Mm. But we move on. We have to. We have to start, I guess, with CM Punk and Adam Page. Adam we... Page, big friend of the elite and yeah. the EVPs. Well, I mean, we we can 
I mean, unless you've been living under a rock or in some kind of, you know, war bunker, um, you would know that there's been issues in All Elite Wrestling with the EVPs and CM Punk having some kind of altercation um, after the All Out media scrum, which well, was during the, the scrum. During because the scrum. Jericho was up and. You will have, if you were watching the scrum, you might not have seen it. You might have missed it. You see a security guard running because there is a fight taking place. Mm-hmm. Now, there are many sides to this story. One including that the Bucks kick, kicked a door down. I find that hard to believe, especially if they're trying to super kick it down. Well, I mean... You've got to. There's so many people that have been commenting on this, and I've, we've yeah. been watching a lot of content. I've been listening to a lot of guys, and whatever you think about the EVPs, um, people that actually know them have actually said they aren't that confrontational guys, and they wouldn't have really. It doesn't seem feasible that they would go running in, kicking a door down. Well, one of the, well, maybe it's more than one. One of the more plausible stories is that the trio or the elite, if you will, went into the dressing room and one of them started getting punched straight away. Really? Yes. Is that is... So I believe Nick was the one that got punched and then also got KO'd by a flying chair. Yeah. Um, flying chair I... courtesy of Ace Steel, who I've, I don't think I've ever seen him wrestle a match in, in my life. Yeah, um, I yeah, it's it's. I mean, one of the crazier parts of the story is that again, Kenny Omega picked up CM Punk's dog Larry and ran it out of the room to save it. Yeah, because this dog was shitting his pants, freaking out. Yeah, yeah. And straight after this, Ace Steel again, someone I've never seen wrestle, didn't know he existed until. Yeah. He G'd up Punk like two weeks ago. Yeah. On Dynamite. He bit Kenny Omega and pulled his hair. Like, what? What is this fucking playground stuff? Must be. I mean, if you all, watch... in, all, in amongst all of that, a flying chair has knocked out Nick Jackson. I mean, you know, this, this, is, this is... The police have been involved in it because these are... Oh, yeah, there's, an, there's an assault there somewhere. There's, a, there's an assault there. If you're throwing a chair at somebody's head and it's not in a wrestling ring where you've or if you're biting it. them, yeah, you know. And I mean, let's start. Let's start at the scrum, okay? Um, CM Punk, what he was actually doing at the scrum. I mean, well, he, you know, it just so happens I have a little bit more about the scrum. Um, it is believed that CM Punk's media scrum rant was intentional and practiced beforehand. Really? And he targeted wrestling journalist Nick Houseman um, when no question was asked about Colt Cabana, but he went straight into Colt Cabana. No, but he, he brought it up. He brought it up. This is what I was going to say. So when the scrum started, he was he put, he focused on this one guy because he knew that the one guy used to do improv with Colt Cabana. Yes, Nick Houseman, yeah. Right? right? So he said, oh, right, Nick, you know, like he, he and even when it, the the conversation went elsewhere, he said, oh, sorry, I've just got, I haven't spoke about the strangers, but when they were talking about MJF, he just, again, went. He had a problem with him. Yeah, you know, this is, and he went back again, so he, he went about Colt Cabana. He went in on Colt Cabana, he, you know, said he was paying his bills, and then they decided he decided not to pay his bills, and he alleged that Colt Cabana shares a bank account with his mother and stuff like that. It's like, do, does anyone need to know this? Yeah, but but what I can't understand is, okay, I still, to this day, to this day, bro, I still don't quite understand what's the beef. I don't understand because from what I gathered, CM Punk left WWE, right? Yes. He did an episode of Colt Cabana's podcast with Colt Cabana. He did two episodes yep. Yep. where he just literally spilled all about what had been going on, blah, blah, blah. Someone sued Punk in within the WWE. I think it might have been the doctor or the one that he was talking about who kept right. giving him Z-Packs or whatever. 
Right. So someone then sued CM Punk for what he said. And on... and Cabana as well, I think. And as Colt a... Cabana because it was right. his podcast, yeah. Okay. But basically So Punk paid those bills. Okay, well good, because he's the one that was spilling the shit. Yeah. It it was his idea to spill the shit. He wanted to do it. Obviously, Colt Cabana wanted him to do it on his podcast. They were brethren. So I still don't quite understand what Punk's beef is with Colt Cabana. I don't know, but it's a very complicated situation. It and was, I'd it love was to the part of Colt Cabana which led to Punk continuing on a road where he talks about the EVPs and saying they couldn't manage a target and, you know, Hangman Page. Yeah, saying he's a brainless piece of shit who's never done fuck all in this business. Yeah. I mean, wow. That's not necessarily true. We can talk about the, you know, we could sit here for ages and go, oh, this number, this number, that number with Hangman Page. But Hangman Page is a former AEW world champion, much like CM Punk. And Hangman Page had a very, very long and drawn out story, which the fans seemed to like they with did. Kenny Omega. But to say that he's not done anything in his business is a little bit It's arrogant as fuck. When when Punk yeah. was sitting up there, the arrogance he showed Eating. E- yeah, eating <laughs> during the media scrum when it's supposed to be I mean I I slyly felt sorry for Tony Khan at times. During... Of course, because he's, he's 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 in the headlights at this point. No, but the problem is as well. I also blame Tony Khan because he's a fucking mark. Because he should turn around to CM Punk and go, "What the fuck are you doing, bro?" Even even in the scrum, turn around and go, "Dude, what the fuck are you doing?" There's there's also, and this like, is what? of there's a <laughs> there's the right hand man of TK at the moment, which is. Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone should have been there to maybe put an end to it. Tell Tony Schiavone maybe should be running the press conferences, the media scrums. Tony's a an established, experienced media guy. Tony Khan is not clearly. Well, I mean, because it, but or maybe he is in a different context. But when he's got his when he's got his his wrestling figure humans there, he's just overwhelmed and 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 and. Well, he is. That's why Tony Schiavone should be in charge of that. Yeah, because you know Tony Schiavone's dealt He's with the fucking Hogan, Savage, you know Flair, Sting, yeah. you know who Tony Schiavone would quite it could someone and I'm sure turned... someone would like Schiavone would have had the balls to pull the mic away and go no, nope, not saying that. Someone, someone, as soon as I mean, this this <laughs> now you now you mention that it was like pre pre-planned that he was going to go into this rant about Colt Cabana. First of all, I don't understand what... Okay, so what would be the point of that? Why Why would he... Because he what basically he was looking, just he wanted was looking a road to, to, to get to, to the embarrass, EVP. He was looking to embarrass the journalist. Right. Most likely, because he's, you know, got some sort of relationship with Colt. And then there's the... Yeah, there's the thing where the Jacksons have looked out for Colt Cabana and instead of Colt being let go or released they found space in a contract for him to go and work for Ring of Honor which doesn't really exist Mm. so Colt's still being paid and I think that annoys Punk even more yeah but the thing is though Ultimately, it's none of Punk's fucking business. The fact that no, he's sitting there it's going, not his money. It "I'm trying matter. to, I'm trying to run a business." It's not your business. It's Tony Khan's business. You mm. know, I heard, you hear him in the scrum. He's like, you know, they're doing this when I'm trying to run a business. Hold on a minute. You're you're not in charge. Who the fuck put you in charge? Yeah. You know, sitting there eating a fucking muffin like a fucking prick. You know, like the arrogance of him just reeks. Um, you know, and to, if I'm honest with you, I'll be honest. What Hangman Page said in the initial interview and the initial promo weren't that fucking bad. What did he really say? All he said was, "I don't take advice," or something. It was that one where he said he didn't take advice, and there was something he said in a 
promo on Dynamite as well, which rubbed Punk the wrong way. Yeah. Which when he said, I'm protecting, I'm protect I love this company and I'm protecting this company from you. That's what he said. Yeah. Prefer punk. You know, and the fact is, maybe Hangman Page does take uh advice from certain veterans, but just from T from Punk, Punk just got pissed off because he wouldn't listen to him. You know, maybe, you know, like I say. It's not the first locker room where people have said that Punk is a bit of a fucking... Well, it's finally virus. starting to break out and come out with, you know, un sort of unconfirmed sources within the locker room saying that Punk had been a divisive figure. And, I mean, this term doesn't quite get rubbing people off the wrong way. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to rub someone off, you've got to do it right. Yeah, I've got to do it the right way, Yeah, yeah. There's no point rubbing someone off in the wrong way. No. Um, telling telling uh, wrestlers not to do the stuff that got them over. So I'm not sure who he's telling that to. Nobody's going to be sure unless, you know, it gets spe- specific. And um, this other bit, preaching old business philosophies. And now, no one really knows what that means. It's all very cryptic. That's very vague, yeah. Old business philosophies, you know, they worked. Maybe for punk, who knows? He's trying to add that. I'm not going to go on that, but he said uh, it said that some people listened and others didn't, which made punk angry. Get over it. Suck yeah, it up, like not everyone wants your advice. You're not in charge, bruv. It ain't your company, you know? Yeah, he was wildly successful for a little while. But it still burns him that he didn't get that WrestleMania main event. Mate. And, you know, someone like Kevin Owens did. Yeah, you know. It, and Kevin it, Owens made a point of tweeting that as well. Um, yeah. A picture of him and Austin in their WrestleMania night one main event. And it's it's funny. It is funny. It's hilarious. And there's a lot of other stories coming out as well about, you know, when CM Punk was saying he's a locker room leader and can people stop throwing rubbish in the locker room? Then Booker C said, what the fuck? And just picked up a dustbin and just tipped it out all over the floor. (laughs) 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 Dave Dave Meltzer says that Tony Khan should have stopped Punk when he started burying the guys. That's true. He should have. Yeah, he should have. Of course he should have. That's absolutely true. Someone... Tony should have said, "Come on, we're not doing this here. If you want to talk to me, we'll talk later." But... Yeah, but but th- this is the thing. This, but Punk, for whatever reason, it's, a, it's open mic night in AEW every every night. Like it's only after someone says something stupid, like Max Caster has done, he's been pulled off of TV for stuff like that. Do you know? Do you know what annoyed me though? They didn't let him do his rap this week, did they? they no, cut they. Him off. I think. I was disappointed. So was they, I. They, they would decide to not let him speak. Yeah. They've literally cut his balls off this week. That annoyed me. Yeah. It's not, was, not a wise move. I was genuinely looking forward to him saying something, you know, like, I don't know what he was going to say, but he would have, you know, maybe they've said, look, we just can't this week, bro. But all in all, from this, from this fight that took place after the media scrum or during the media scrum Tony Khan had to lay down the law and people got suspended including three of your executive vice presidents I don't know why you need three but you've got three Um, the Bucks and Kenny Omega suspended stripped of their trios title that they won on Sunday night so you know no defences it's just it's another title that's up in the air CM Punk and Ace Steel is a bit of a mystery. No one seems to know whether Punk is going to walk or he's going to be suspended. But it's a... I mean, the point is pointless now because CM Punk hurt himself again. Well, I mean, I mean, the, the, my honest opinion on what is going on is... He's broken down. He's he's He's, he's realised... Okay, that you can't, man can't live off bread alone, bruv. And in the context of the wrestling world, man can't eat off Chicago big pops alone. Okay, 
So what he's realised is he's gone into AEW, he's been paid a shit load of money. Five mil, I believe. Five million dollars, okay, for how many years contract, three years, five years, who knows, okay? Good Lord. So the fact is he's realised that his his body, he, he's cashing checks, that he's, he's writing checks that his body can't cash, okay? He's gone into AEW and he's just been injury after injury after injury. He came in, won one title, wouldn't vacate it, kept hold of the title and had time off to fix his foot. And apparently he's had metal things put in his foot. And the foot this... he injured doing a stage dive. Right. Yeah, yeah. Not even wrestling, doing something mm-hmm. fucking stupid, gassing up the fans, gassing himself up, wanking himself off. Um, now... The, the, see, this is the thing as well. So, is he if he's suspended? What difference does it make if he's out for eight months with a yeah, fucking there's, there's, heck anyway? Here's the thing: he is out for eight months, and there's no. If I'm Tony Khan, I'm letting him go. Yeah, no one else is taking him on. You're not losing him to the WWE. He's one of the guys that you can let go. Just you know what? Tony Khan spent forty odd million quid on the Ring of Honor brand, yeah? Yeah. The intellectual property, the logos, the video, the video library. Just fucking lose the five million quid and just tell Punk to fuck off, bruv. But the, the problem is Tony Khan is a huge CM Punk mark. It's is like... He? Is he, though? Well, I mean... Is he now? Maybe not so much now. I mean... I wouldn't be. <clears throat> if there's a sane, there's got to be, there's got to be some sane people in that company, running the company, that, that has got to have pulled people aside, Tony Khan aside, and just say, bro, get a fucking grip of this company. You know get- no one said that. You know nobody has said that. Someone needs to. Yeah, of course someone needs to, but you know nobody has done that because... Even now. Even all, now. Everyone's getting a paycheck. Everyone's happy to be getting paid no matter what it is they're doing, whether they're sitting, sitting in catering or, you know, working dark or working, you know, the regular schedule of Dynamite Rampage. Paid for you. No one wants to mess with Tony right now because Tony could pull, Tony's the only one in charge. Tony can pull the plug whenever he feels like it. And then their meal tickets are... Well, no, surely exactly. they're contracted. They're still going to be getting paid. Oh, of course. They could still get paid. But their, surely... va- their value their value to anyone else is, is dead in the water if they're not on TV. Yeah, but, but, but so this is the problem. So you've got a fucking pussy hole in Tony Khan who has got no bollocks and he's not. he's got no... He's dealing with wrestlers, bruv, who are egotistical, yeah. fucking arrogant. Um, when you're paying them X amount of dollars, you know, they think they're the fucking God's gift. The, the arrogance that was spewing out of CM Punk when he was sitting in that chair was just, God, I wanted to fucking slap him. It was fucking <laughs> annoying. <clears throat> so with Punk, I mean, I personally feel Steel should be fired. No matter what, you know, you don't get to bite people with pull hair and throw chairs at people mm-hmm. and keep your job. Mm-hmm. You know, a trip to anger management's not going to work. Apparently, he trained punk. Good for him. You know, that's another. What Great job, Jackass? How does that? Yeah, how does that get you a job? Like, yeah. <clears throat> but also suspended. Michael Nakazawa, Brandon Cutler sort of makes sense. He's always with the Bucks. Christopher Daniels. Yeah. And everybody's favorite producer, Pat Buck. Now sure. Christopher Christopher Daniels is supposed to be talent liaison. Yes. What was he doing there? Because he wasn't trying to break up a fight. Well, we don't know, do we? Well, clearly not if people are being knocked out. No, um, but the, the, the problem is Tony Khan is that type of prick, okay, to not upset. 
CM Punk just say, right, you're all involved. I don't, you know, you know, like at school, oh, I don't care who started it. You're all getting. <laughs> I don't care who started it. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? But yeah. Um... You know, it, but in a house fire, you don't just go, oh, we're not going to investigate how it started. What, the little cigar in the fucking, in the bin? No, we don't, you know, we don't need to know how it started. Of course we do. There, there should be different levels of, you know, who, you know, like I say, even, you know, like Bill Burr says, okay, not every ass kicking just falls out the sky, okay? But you've there's someone's got to have instigated something, yeah. Whether they've gone into the dressing room to speak to him because they're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing out there? That's live TV, yeah. What what are you doing? Well, yeah, they've been well, going into them, business for themselves, haven't they? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah <laughs> but that's the thing. They would be as think about this. CM Punk is not an executive vice president. He's a fucking wrestler, right? The Bucks and. And you know me, bro, and you know on this show, I have not been a cheerleader for the Bucks or for Kenny Omega by any stretch of the imagination. But in their role as executive vice presidents, they are well within their rights to go into CM Punk's dressing room after that fucking dog shit scrum and say to him, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck were you doing? What the fuck well, were with you it, With it being a wrestling show, the first thing you go, are you working here? Like, Are you trying to set something up? Because if not... Yeah, we have a bigger problem. Exactly, Mundo, and they are well within their rights to go in there and say, "Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Is are you working, or what is your fucking problem? We need to sort this out because that cannot happen." Yeah, and then if Punk has just gone off on one, which this is the more believable thing for me, as executive vice presidents, they've watched the scrum and they've gone, "Dude, we need to speak to this cunt. Look, we need to have a word with him." So they've gone in there. <laughs> and said, dude, what the fuck? And then Punk has just gone off on one. Chairs have been thrown. People have been punched. Like you said, it seems they've walked in there and they've just literally been punched almost on site. Well, they're that's well on, within their on right. site beef, isn't it? Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm trying to say. But they're well within their rights to question his behaviour. He's not a vice president, an EVP. He's a wrestler. All right, yep. he's a he's champion. It don't mean shit. I post, I post to you earlier on this week you did a, a, a question about a possible conspiracy involving punk i mean should we put it to bed that he was just trying to you know get the other lot angry i know because i think you're correct because his behavior and his body language when mjf's name was mentioned and he said, oh, you just want me to keep working with pricks. That won't work. That was a shoot, bruv. Mm. You know, because I think the problem is he did not like that reception that, that MJF in got. In his hometown, yeah. He did not like well, that, dude. That let, rubbed let's him. circle back for a second. My, on, um, the question I posed... Give him the to, conspiracy. Give him I, to him. I you know I love a conspiracy. question to Chris. Do it. That Punk decided to behave the way he did with all his, you know, quips and insults and all of that, to push the news and move the... Overshadow. And, yeah, definitely overshadow, but move the narrative. I know control your narrative is, you know, a stupid thing, but to move the narrative over to Punk and take as much as he could away from the return of MJF, which should have been way bigger. Yeah. And it was big for five minutes slightly bigger when he was on dynamite as well but punk completely overshadowed it on it purpose should, it should have been the biggest wrestling news of the weekend he made that choice punk should have gone out there and just spoke about the match any disagreements bro think about this all right if me and you have a fucking disagreement about something right not that we would do or whatever. Well, you wait for my media scrum. You just wait. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, <laughs> bro. But we're not going to do it on here, are we? No. <laughs> Why would... Do you know what I mean? We're not going to do it on here. Not that, we, you know... Um, it, it's fucking... And, <laughs> and we're not a multi... 
million pound organization. We are two jabronis doing a podcast about wrestling. And yet we still have that level of professionalism where if if we've got an issue with each other, we're not going to do it on the fucking stream. Yeah. We're going to say, we're going to have a chat afterwards and go, oh, I didn't really like, you know, the fact that, you know, you sent me a, a Champions League fucking thing. Or do you know what I mean? Like if we had any kind of, but not that we would do or what, you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, because it's all banter. We, I mean, we don't really get offended by anything, but really. my point is we've got even that level of professionalism where we w- we just wouldn't do it. It just makes no sense yeah, for the I... business of the podcast. So why he felt he could do that is because he feels that that company is his company. I That's think he that. feels that his, his contract is, you know, because it's a 5 million contract, it's probably bigger than everyone else's. Mm-hmm. He has that sway pull and that's the sort of he's the back, the back door in the you know thing that triple h mentioned to him on yeah. on camera like on the smackdown like years ago and leopard's not going to change his spots is he no but talking about leopards i've just got a brand new leopard gecko Bought to, bought to me by my lovely missus and my family for my 40th birthday. And he is a spotted leopard gecko and he is named Dusty Rhodes because um, he looks like Dusty Rhodes with his spots. So I shall probably put a little picture of him up here just now. You should probably put a big thing over on the screen like over your head that you're going to be 40 as well. Yeah. I think it's important that we don't miss that. Yeah, let's not um, <laughs> go there. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I mean, th- this whole thing, the behaviour of... I mean, some people are backing punk. Some people are saying... Oh, Jim Cornette in particular. Yeah, but I'm surprised at that because, I'm not. you know, Jim Cornette should understand that, you know, what did Hangman Page really do that was that bad? He didn't really say anything that was that bad, I don't think. Maybe not Punk really. got mad that he couldn't do the buckshot lariat. <laughs> It, 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 he tried like me, three times, didn't he? To me, that was a bit of a storm in a teacup. It was just CM Punk. CM Punk's just looking at excuses to bury people. Don't you think? Don't you think he's just taking the very small? It's things? it's been a it's been a massively failed experiment. Well, I mean, the only person that can put an end to it or change it is the scientist that is Tony Khan. Yeah. Oh boy, that was a lot, wasn't it? And right. we've still got more. We still there's more because whilst there have been rumors of releases and release requests, one of them actually happened. Uh, Malachi Black, Alistair Black, Tommy End, however you want to know him, got a conditional release. Six months. He cannot work anywhere else which is crazy but due to his mental health and stuff he's just he wanted to get out so obviously we wish him the best and we can't wait to see him back where whatever he's doing i mean is that six months away from AEW, then back to AEW, or is that six no months it's then... six i think it's six months he's six months out and he the, he can't wrestle anywhere else but what is that probably because that's like a no was, compete clause, yeah. Like that's the, what, probably when the, the end of his contract runs out in six months' time. I'm not sure, I don't know how long his contract was, but I mean, again, the conspiracy guy in me says, you know, that six months runs out just for WrestleMania, yeah. I mean, you, you, bro. Are people are people sitting around the table, or a different table? The, thinking, the head of, thinking, the head of the table. maybe not. Maybe not the head of the table, but maybe <laughs> suggesting that if we get out of our contracts now and he gives us six months non compete, like we can be back in time for WrestleMania. And that includes the rumored people that have requested releases, like Miro, you know, William Regal. I don't know where that one came from. Yeah, I mean, Christopher Daniels apparently has asked for his release. Brian Danielson. Uh, Thunder Rosa, although 
I don't know about that one. Fuck the Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa is a curious case. She's she's been ridiculed and almost buried, like yeah, Conan, on TV in general, like by the likes of Britt Baker and stuff. And Conan reckons and Tony Storm did it at the media scrum. Yeah, she, but Tony to, uh, Conan reckons that she's being punished for uh, for maybe being too mouthy, too lippy to Tony Khan or to whoever. Um, but she reckons she's again. Been... There was there was the the one that we saw that she was horrible to assistants or something. Was it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, or like uh like the helpers and stuff like that. Like Well, Eva Lee said ages ago that she's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, I think Eva Lee knows some shit. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> and she was the one that said about um certain trainers being abusive as well. And mm. then it came out that they were being abusive, and then this whole Thunder Rosa stuff is coming out and that and she had a tweet and she said, Look, so you know, turns out I weren't lying then, weren't it? You know? No, and it was possibly naive of anyone, whoever was booking, to put those two together in a match. Oh, no, book already here, mate. Yes. I Can't know. be naive. But do people have people started to realise that the grass definitely isn't greener? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I... Why do you think Miro's not having CJ on TV? He would have. He would snap her up in a second. Tony would, if CJ decided she wanted to be back on TV. Yeah, but she clearly doesn't. And you know, holding off on signing an AEW contract because you can probably get one back in the WWE. The news, the news of. I mean, I thought it was absolutely incredible as well that at the end of the media scrum, Tony Khan's behaviour, when he was talking about Jim Crockett promotions and Very oh, I've, weird. Very I've got weird. I've got fucking more money than them. I've got more money than them. Fuck it, I'm not going to take this fucking shit. You know, it's like wow, bro. He's been, you know, maybe though. Maybe he heard news of what had happened out the back after Punk went out the back because that was right at the end of the media scrum. I think Tony Khan was the last person to speak. Rant and rave. Yeah, and yeah. maybe he's like, you know, him saying, oh, I'm not going to take this shit is like a subliminal indirect of he's not going to let these people do... He's not going to let, you know... Someone, Get their releases. Yeah, so, or... or let them behave like they're behaving. You know, someone needs to tell CM Punk, you're not you're not the best thing since sliced bread, bruv. You need to fucking sit back and and, and you know. But he's happy. He's at, he's had he's had the title twice. He's had probably a handful of matches. Uh, he's been injured twice, and he's got. Five he's had, he's had the he's had the title twice. He, I mean, he technically defended it in the. Oh, uh, what's the unification. unification? Yeah, the unification yeah. with Moxley got squashed in that, in which I, I think is horrendous booking because him being portrayed as a hero when he's just generally an ass, yeah, just doesn't work. He's no long he he's just not likable. Apart from in that ridiculous fucking city that he calls home. Yeah, but even, that's, even that city as a wrestling city in general is a fucking joke. And you know how I feel about it because I I brought this up over the weekend and you know we laughed about it a little bit. But well it leads in the Duma from Chicago as well. How do you think they would have felt about CM Punk's behaviour? Yeah. It's Chicago's their city too. Chicago Street Fight, bro. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Um <laughs> I just think I mean leagues apart what you know, what was put on in Cardiff over the weekend and what was put on in Chicago. Yeah, and I think the rest of the wrestling world and fandom is starting to realise and is a little bit bored of, you know, one group of fans chanting CM Punk every five minutes. He is not he is not your hero. Like he is he's a bit of a dick. You you've still got you know, Brett's a fucking hero. 
check yeah the sorry I, yeah brett yeah check the t-shirt hero. bro you know it uh you've still got these aw mark fanboys who it's not i don't think it's aw i think it's chicago i don't know man you've i've still seen people defending what's been going on online just so, you know saying oh you know tony, tony needs to stay away from there he needs to stop running that city for maybe six months find another city well they're in they've been in buffalo and they're yeah they're doing new the new york, york run yeah they're doing the new york run but that's because of maxwell maxwell um Danny garcia was yeah. the main event in buffalo he is from buffalo uh yeah, on, di- on Dynamite, it was a you, you know you've saying it say it was a good show. I I quite enjoyed it. Some of it, it had it some all right, good moments. But, yeah, I I don't I didn't think the main event was that much cop. To be fair, who was the main event? Daniel Garcia, uh, Wheeler Uter and Daniel Garcia. Yeah, a for AW fans likened it to this version's Rock and Austin, which is just comical. Really? Yeah, um, I likened their style of match more to an Angle Benoit, but way less technical and way less good. They're two young pups. Yeah. Yeah. They're two young pups who with the right guidance in time could be all right. Daniel Garcia's got the better figure, um, you know, f- physique um out of the two. I mean they were doing the Ring of Honor pure rules match, which is, you know, no punching and all that. You've got to shake hands and all that shit, but it's gimmicky. Boring. Um, yeah, I mean, you can you have know. a wrestling match with all these extra rules, and that it's, it's Bill Watts esque, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, no mats at ringside, no no top rope. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's um, yeah, I mean, the whole show for me was really the MJF promo at the beginning. MJF does come out and cut a lovely promo at the beginning, um, sarcastically. Geeing up the fans about Buffalo and wearing the Buffalo Bills jersey, talking about Josh Allen and all that stuff. And then Moxley comes out pissed, rightfully pissed, because he was meant to be on his holidays. Yeah, meant to have a little you, break. Yeah, but again, you've got... Okay, the way they've set that tournament up, all right? Well, yeah, that tournament wouldn't have existed, would it? No, but... Until the, it, the other no, day. But the thing is, if you're going to have... A tournament that the winner is ultimately going to be AEW champion. Wouldn't you take the top four people in the rankings or the top six people for, in the rankings and put them in the tournament? But no, you put in ex WWE guys who are going to be the draw. You've got Daniel Bryan, you've got fucking Chris Jericho, you've got Moxley, you've got Hangman Page, who's a former champion. Fine. Hangman uh, Page is now out. Yeah. And then, and who was the, who's the other person? Sammy and Darby. Sammy and Darby. Yeah. Well, Sammy. Yeah. Darby's out. <laughs> Is he out? <laughs> yeah. They tape rampage. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. Sammy beat Darby. Um, what? So it's going to be they're going they're setting up for Sammy versus Jericho. Sammy Moxley. Is the on Wednesday. And it's going to be Jericho and. Danielson in a rematch from the pay per view. So my my feeling is that Moxley's going to win it, and MJF is going to cash in his chip or whatever from the Joker Casino ladder match. Oh, the fucking snore fest that is Moxley. I'm sorry, man. Everyone was gassing up his promo. Oh, oh I, I'm not going to knock the promo. He's 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 the shining light of professionalism where there is none. I mean, well, there is none in that in that you know slightly larger group of people <laughs> behaving like tits. You know, Moxley is the main event that he's come out and he's he's behaving himself for the most part. So why not? Yeah. Even even other people that they should have been relying on, like Eddie Kingston, you know, suspended. I mean, for but... for, for going after Sammy Guevara. <laughs> Guevara, I'm not sure if Guevara did. Sammy get suspended too. I don't think so. I mean, he yeah. didn't. No, I think it was. Well. Yeah, I think it was you know. Eddie's thing. But again, where there's where there's a lack of professionalism, someone just being professional, 
and Time. saying saying yeah. things, yeah, that our yeah. professional is going to get highlighted. Yeah. So that's you know, it, it wasn't a terrible promo. It wasn't amazing. It was just a, it was just a good promo. It was to shine a light on the shit and to shine a light on himself because he's not the shit. <laughs> Yeah, you know, anyone would down a pint of piss after having a handful of salt, wouldn't they? Yeah. You know? I mean, I wouldn't call what he did a pint of piss, but... <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. You know, anything even mediocre is good yeah. when you've had dog shit, you know? So, like I say, I'm not a fan of Moxley. I think he's generic, terrible. But, you know, charisma-wise, MJF... They need, you know, even MJF said this company needs a leader. Oh, that's a good line. Very good line. Amazing. He said, this company needs a leader and who better to trust than me? Yeah. You know what I mean? He said, then he does go into, you know, MJF mode where he talks about WWE and talks about the bidding war of 2024. I think that's great though. I do think that's great. And he goes, and 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 the only he, he talks about the only person called calm in the in the wrestling yeah, world. Yeah, Jolly what Old doing. Saint Nick. Jolly Old Saint Nick. That line was Very absolutely good. incredible. You know, it's a it's a worked shoot. Which is, but it's it's a work it's a work shoot in a way that he is probably essentially booking his own move to the WWE. Yeah, I mean, he is, he is you know, with Moxley on the side or no, to the side, he is the other he is the other standout. You know, I don't think anyone's touching Danielson. He's injury prone. Hangman, let's find a spot for him. But where, where else? Jericho. Mm. You know, Sammy, Sammy's too problematic. Darby's problematic. <coughs> that I mean, they're, they're, but they're too nichey as well. I they'll take. They'll take. They'll take Alistair Malachi back in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of the. I don't you know, know it, and they'd probably give him a give him a Luger deal where you know they offer him less and he'll take it because mm. his missus is there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean these guys that that went to AEW hoping a lot of Triple H guys. They are a lot of Triple H guys and a lot of them, you know, when I mean dude, I'm not being funny. Um Regal is a huge Triple H guy. Yeah. They're very very close. You know, he's got Andrade been, as well. Got been like on this. the phone to him and just said you know, look, pal, fucking, I'm in the driving seat here, mate. You know, they got rid of you and we didn't want you, you know, mm-hmm. I had no control over it. But now I think, I think. Um, Regal he, jumped the gun. I've, I think Regal jumped, jumped the gun for sure. He he kind of, whether they, they just waved. Um, because Daniel Bryan and Moxley were obviously in AEW already. Yeah when they probably heard about Regal getting released or whatever, they were probably on the phone going, bro, 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 we can get you a job here. We can make you some money. We can make you some money. And he's gone, yeah, fucking sweet, mate. I'm on my way. You know? He goes, oh, you lovely buttercup. Yeah. Let me pull your petals off and rub them all over myself. (laughs) He's an eccentric Englishman. He can get away with it. (laughs) He's also got a massive lizard. No, he does. He's okay. Got... He... Have you seen it? I have seen William Regal's lizard, and it's massive. It's massive lizard. He's got a fucking huge lizard, bruv. It's a tegu. You know them tegus? They're a fucking massive iguana-looking fucking thing. Huge. Oh, okay. Massive. So, the old phallic iguana. Oh, bruv. It's yeah. huge. The thing's huge. Meaty. <laughs> big meaty men slapping the meat. Big meaty men slapping meat, you know? <laughs> so... This this whole situation is far from far from over. Oh, it's because, not even close, is it? It's not even know, close to the end. There's going to be just, so much more, so much more nonsense to be to be had, and who knows where it'll end up at this point. Well, as long as it ends up 
with that shiny title belt being over the shoulders of one fine Jewish gentleman whose name begins with M and just like the man who parted the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> I sorry, I just I've just pulled up because you know breaking news can happen at any time. Oh, I think I think Brian R. Solomon might have nicked your meme, but Brian R. Solomon. So yeah, on the on Twitter, but like we won't go too far into the meme, but I think more more will come out as the as the days and weeks go on. I mean, there's been some great memes and jokes about Dark Side of the Ring and stuff, and you know, the Bucks sitting there doing their interviews for Dark Side, and you know, and then and all of a sudden, you know, a chair comes flying at me, and all that is pretty good. <laughs> it, it, I mean, you've you've got a you've got a laugh really because you know, um, it it's oh yeah, Brian R. Solomon, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, Brian! He stole my meme yeah. um, from Facebook and put it on Twitter. Bless him. We love Brian, though. He's fantastic. Yeah, guy. very good guy. I'd love to get him on talking about this stuff. I mean, because he, you know, he's worked around wrestlers. He knows what they're like. I mean, did we talk to him about Punk? Did we I don't think we about- did. No, that was we. We focused we covered on a lot, yeah. WWE, didn't we? In this time at the magazine and stuff yeah. like that, and the original Sheik. Um, you know, th- this story is not going to end well, though, because things are only going to get worse. How does it end well then? It ends. How does it end well? I'll tell you how it ends well. Tony Khan goes to sleep tonight at like three in the morning after he's had his 58th line. Um, bump, yeah. You know, he has that final bump and he goes to sleep tonight and he, and he, and he reevaluates his life and what he wants out of AEW. Right. <laughs> That's not what I asked. Man. <laughs> right. You're, I say, how's he going to, how's he going to get like through this or get past this and all that? Like, how are they going to get through it? Like, and you're, you're, your, I'm biggest, the your biggest answer is for him to just bin it. <laughs> no, 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 no. To reassess his life and ask himself the question, what do I really want out of all elite wrestling? What is the what is the what is the the main aim of it? Is my aim to spunk a load of money and hang around with wrestlers as my friends? and let them do whatever they really want to do and not really ultimately give a shit about where we're going to be in 10 years' time. There is no 10-year plan. But but this, Absolutely but, not. But that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So either he he reevaluates what he's going to actually do and wake up in the morning with an inflated sense of what he wants to do and an inflated pair of bollocks an inflated goes, lizard. Yeah, and he goes into that dressing room and he sits every single fucker in there down. This oh, is, there's, a, there's, there's a talent meeting due, it surely. Ha- has to happen. And, and he has to say, no more free reign for any of you fuckers now. This is it. I'm getting writers in. You can work with those writers, but there will be a fucking line now, Yeah. You it's are always, not, a, always a line. Yeah. There's got to be a line, bro. There's got to be a line. There, when you're trying to run a business, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? There's always yeah. a line. Yeah. But if, if you're trying to run a business and you want it to be successful, the the fact that he's... I, I can't see this happening, though, because from his demeanour, when he was talking about, oh, this is a war, this is my life, and I've got a shitload more money than them lot of people, all he's going to do is just... Keep throwing money at the... He's just going to keep throwing money at it. So he's just going to keep trying shit until it does something, and then he that that's it. Or it's, all he's going to do is just keep throwing money in it, when really what he needs to do is reevaluate the hierarchy within that company. And he needs to say, right, I am... And I don't... I, 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 you know, I hate to say it. He needs to go in there and say, I am the fucking Vince McMahon of this shit now, Okay. Yo, I'm fucking in control. You lot don't tell me what's going on. 
Punk doesn't sit there next to me arrogantly saying he's running a business. No, motherfucker, this is my business. I pay you, so you shut the fuck up and you say what I want you to say and you do what I want you to do. Someone needs to take control in that company. But unfortunately, that that's how it ends well. Tony to grow a pair of bollocks and just say, right, this, this enough of this shit now. We need to do this properly. You've had your fun, yeah? You've had your fun. I let I this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, the, the gravy train's got to stop. It's got to stop. It has to stop. He needs to turn around to him and say, right, this, you, you've been given enough rope to hang yourself and you've all fucking hung you, you've you've chopped your own bollocks off now. So now this is the way we do it. We're gonna get some writers in, we're gonna do this, we're gonna structure it a little bit more. It's not playtime anymore, yeah? None of these little fucking YouTube channels where you're just making your own videos and doing this, this, and this. It's got to be reined in. It has to be reined in. Someone's got to take control. There's too many too many cooks spoiling the broth and everyone's chipping in their own. There's no structure. You've, you're talking about a multi-million pound business. And if anyone is going to turn around and, and, and say this to him, it's got to be Tony Schiavone. It should really turn around to him and go. Well, if Tony, Tony, if Tony's the, you know, the the right hand man, yeah, he, he, has said, to... he he should tell him and be straight with him. And say you've created this, you've made a rod for your own back, mate. Yeah, you. The reason why this has happened is because you have not, you have allowed people free reign for too long to do whatever they want to do. End of. It's Tony Khan's fault. It's his company. It's no one else's fault. He's ultimately the man who says what goes and what don't. Would you, you know, strip so... the other three of their EVP status? <sighs> I've, I, I did say or to you. Keep, let them keep it in, like in name only. I did say to you yesterday, strip them. Yeah. And from the moment that AEW started, and this, I'm live on video saying this. When AEW started, I always said. It was always going to be a bad idea to have active roster wrestlers as your executive vice president because well, it's, it's, it's gonna... territory business, isn't it? It's yeah. just like that. It's yeah. Always, you're always going to have problems where they're going to be booking themselves to win. They're going to be booking themselves to have titles. They're going to be booking. They're going to bury in people that they don't like, and they're going to be elevating people that they do like. You've got to have impartial people who have no dog in the fight who just want a good product yeah but you're never going to get that when you've got and let's be honest dude who's the guy with the biggest brain out here cody Rhodes. he got the fuck out he could smell what the croc was cooking the yeah? american roller coaster he, he knew what the fuck was going yeah. on he's not he would you know papa didn't raise no fool yeah he he's been around the wrestling business his whole life. His dad is fucking Dusty Rhodes. He must have seen what was going on. And if I'm honest with you, Cody didn't really book himself to win. He was putting people over. Yeah, for the most part, he would. He yeah, I mean, he put Brody over really strong, didn't he? He put people over really strong. He was putting himself in matches where people setting him on fire. Where he was, you know, he he, he was, you know, it. Yeah, let's be honest, man. Let's let's be honest about it. You know, it wasn't he wasn't booking himself constant title reigns. Yes, he had the belt. He was the first one that had the belt or whatever, wasn't he? Yeah, he to TNT. The TNT belt, you know, yeah. but ultimately he you know, he was trying to elevate other people. You know, he was in a match it matches against Shaq and um jade cargill and all that and, and they were like, green as far yeah, yeah mate you know so you know and he's been there in the in the nightmare factory and that is his money going into that i'm pretty sure um you know cody knew what he was doing bro and cody left and had his fucking wrestlemania moment you know that he did he 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 left so you know i predict that more people will leave. Um, I predict that unless, I, I mean, like we said, when, <laughs> when AEW started, we were excited. We wanted it to do well. When we saw the way things were going, I've been buying up figures like a motherfucker because I'm telling you, 
if it carries on the way it's going to go, AEW will not be around in 10 years' time. It won't. And yeah. I got the version of the ring that had Cody's figure in it, not fucking Omega's. Yeah? Suck my hairy bean bags. But you didn't want to take a bite out of it and pull his hair then. No, nah, bruv. I got the Cody Rhodes uh, ring with the Cody Rhodes, the little figure in his little belt. Yeah? So... I mean, is that enough AEW chatter? What's that? Is that enough AEW chatter? No, it ain't. No? All right. What, what else have you got? MJF, bro. What do you M- want to talk about? MJF. Let's just, for, for the final little cross the T's and dot in the I's, his promo was, I mean, it, 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 his return should have been bigger, though. Of course it should. And... There was a, it was a really weird way to do it. I think the way they did it. I personally don't think you should have unmasked at the pay per view. Um, I I agree with you, but I also think that the internet rumors were far too much, and everyone knew it was him anyway. Do you know well, what I mean? You, you, you still you hang on to that. You don't. You know, yeah. You didn't even need to play that silly message. No. I think that was a dead giveaway. I mean, like you saying. There was probably two or three weeks worth of TV in that. Yeah, maybe a so, ratings bump. Who knows? Yeah, you know the yeah. Well, that's it. You know, so it's um, For someone who loves bumps. He hates a ratings bump. Mate, he was yeah. wide eyed and wild. At he the was end choked of on his water, didn't he? Mate, he was really in, you know, incensed. Yeah. Um, and throwing his money around, but yeah, for me. The, the 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 shining example of getting back to wrestling is MJF. So if they can, I mean, they're not embracing what's gone on. Tony Khan didn't allude to the reason why he's had to vacate. To I mean, I'm not being funny. That's not a light decision. His world champion has been stripped of the title, and his trios champions have been stripped of the title, and they are suspended. Yeah, there was. There's a lot to cover for him, and he's got a two-hour show. Like he'd even need to re- release a statement online and hit it across yeah. all the socials. Having it to open your dynamite maybe wasn't the best idea, but he had to smash those points across because for some reason he was crowning new trios champions in the first match. And they've got this rushed version of a tournament heading towards Grand Slam at Al Farash Stadium. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm worried that this is the start of, because of the booze and stuff, I'm worried that this is the start of heel Tony Khan. I'm also worried it's the start of babyface MJF. No, not yet. You know- well, you you know you he know, will so... get he will get cheered like mad if he cashes in in New York. But again, he's a New Yorker, right? Or is it Jersey? He's from New Jersey, but okay, he... uh, they'll cheer him no matter what when he yeah, wins. It. I mean, but then but... he can go back to healing it up and taking the piss out of every crowd he goes in front of. I swear, someone suggested, and someone I heard it online somewhere that CM Punk suggested turning MJF babyface. Why? One of one of the because he wants to take away his his fucking yeah that, that stinks of agenda doesn't it yeah of course it is yeah it's like I, know, don't, I don't like the, that he's the best heel in the game he's the best heel oh I don't game. know and you want is to take that what MJF yeah well Punk's there's, probably the biggest there's heel one now. there's one more there's one more heel that you know is probably the biggest right now. You know, and you should acknowledge him. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you look at the difference in the press conferences of WWE oh, and AEW, you know. Say what you will, but Triple H is not going to get caught cold like that. No, no, because they've got, a, it's like, you go out there, you do this, end of, you know. Roman um, said two or three words in his, didn't he? he? He was asked a question about the crowd booing him or whatever, and he's like, they should have done what you should do, acknowledge me. 
then he and bowled he, out. And then the geezer goes, I acknowledge you. And he goes, you goddamn right. <laughs> and then he fucking walked He left, out. yeah. Again, you know, professionalism. An- another, another very quick point about the media scrum. They need to stop doing them. Yeah, they there, there is that. Them. It's not. It's not. Um, it, it, it's not it's um, pointless. It wouldn't surprise it's a, me. It's a circle jerk for all those dicks smarks. who. Smarks. Well, it's not even for the smarks. It's for the for the dicks that you know promote AEW week in week out on their sites on their you know forums. But they think they think they're smart marks. They they are it's smart not, marks. It's not a press conference. It's not a legitimate press conference. It never fucking will be. You you had when you only invite Meltzer, Alvarez, and you know, Sat. You, you had Swerve on there talking about the match, right? And then you've got the so-called journalists talking about, oh, um, you know, with the reaction that happened in the thing, did, um, did did Tony, did you not think about calling an audible and switching the finish no, on the fly? What a fucking horrible question! It's an absolutely horrible question, and then Tony tries to cut it off, but that you, but to keep some kind of air of legitimacy about it, but you've created that Tony. You've yeah. created these, you've, you've taken, you've got rid of kayfabe completely. You've had people pissing on it. If he's going to do anything, it. he should have the, the pre, you know, whatever it is, the, the call or whatever it is they have, but stick to that. These, or you have preset questions. Yeah. You vet the questions. Yeah. You, you don't vet the questions. You're killing the business. You've got some fucking dickhead, fucking smart mark, so-called journalist, just completely, get, you know, they're up there with the title belts, like, yeah, we won these belts and that, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, but that could have been taken away from you if Tony decides it's going to change on a yeah, thing because a the crowd... shit way to... Yeah. It's actual, absolutely unbelievable question. I was watching it like, oh, my God, at least pretend. At least it, they don't understand. This is, again, the problem. They don't understand what they actually should be doing it's wrestling they should be creating the impression that it's real combat what is the point in them sitting up there with them titles saying we're we're really proud that we've done this that we've done we we we, we kept hold of the belts yeah, and we, blah, had, blah, we blah. had a good old chat before we went out and did this yeah you know it's, it's like there's no point in doing the media scrum if you're not going to pretend that it's a legitimate fight so we, we'll agree end the media scrums End them. Yeah. Because all you're doing is giving dickheads like that an opportunity to kill the business, kill any kind of idea. You, you've got rankings for fuck's you are, sake. You're, where, you're destroying your own momentum. You, you, of course you are. You've got rankings where you, apparently wins matter, but then you've got ju- so-called dickhead journalists there just showing everybody in the whole world that wins don't matter mm. because you can... Call an audible. They think they're smart ass. Horrendous question that you know, is. I didn't hear that. So... I didn't see that one to be fair. And I think Dude, that is just they think they're so smart, but using the lingo of the business. Oh, look at us. We know how it works. Oh, we're magicians. We so know bad. how to pull the rabbit out of the hat. Oh, you Tony, did you think about calling an audible and switching the finish on the fly? You fucking not you're not sounding smart. You're killing the business. Shut up, go home. Yeah, leave the media scrum for legitimate journalists who are going to actually at least play along with it. Yeah? Well, you say that, but Clash at the Castle had its legitimate journalists. You know, the big, you know, the big name news sites talking about it, promoting it, doing all of that stuff across the weekend. I got messages. You know, I got a message from my mum saying, "Oh, I saw the." The wrestling shows on the news, that's the one you're going to, in it? And I'm like, Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> like Yeah. So it you know, it's not just a you know, regional oh, you know, Cardiff News has got the wrestling coming. It was national news in yeah, the Yeah, Triple UK. H was on Good Morning with Vernon Kay. Yes, he was on, you know, a show that I would never watch in general, but he turned up and so you do you check out the clip, you see what he's got to say for himself. Mm-hmm. You know, he did the big interview with Ariel Helwani, which ended up going on YouTube. It was a good interview as well. I watched that back. Um, I've got, I've got to watch that. I've got that queued up. You know, Monday night, massive return. Braun Strowman's back. Does seven million hits on YouTube or something? Yeah, something ridiculous like that. Mm. I, they get it at the minute. They absolutely get it. 
So, so let's let's move move towards that weekend. You know, Chris, this was your first live WWE show. Yes, something you told us. I think in after the, the yeah on on the weekend, yeah, in the apartment, yeah, when we got yeah. there. Chris's first live WWE show. What did you think? I mean, you <laughs> for 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 the spectacle, um, for the setup. You know the crowd. Um, you you can't you can't fault WWE. You can't. I mean, it's not the the first big wrestling show that I've been to either. You know. I think we can fault them. Running out of programs. Oh yeah, we. I mean, yeah, they've run out of programs. Scandalous. That well, I'll I'll tell you the one bad thing. The merchandise, the way the merchandise was done, it's tough, yeah. was fucking terrible. The shop in the town was just there. Was, I mean, I'm not going to stand in a queue for three hours to go and have a look around the shop. No, you know they should have. They should have rented. They should have had more than one of them. You've got sixty thousand people coming to watch that event. A lot of them are going to want to buy stuff, so don't just rent out one little tiny fucking shop. You know, and have people. They rented out the shop next door to him just for the queue. For the queue, yeah, for the queuing system, it was it was bad, and we the didn't shop, take any pictures of it or anything. No, but the shop next door to the actual shop was bigger, and that was only used for people to queue. It was ridiculous, and there wasn't a lot of different merchandise anyway. I mean, I bought a T-shirt that you know I was here one because you could only get them there. Um. You know, it but but you know the event was great. The only problem was the merchandise and the availability of programs and stuff like that. Um, Cardiff, as a as a show, yeah, your first WWE live show, like worth it. Yeah, it was great. It was absolutely, it was fantastic. You know, and we, you know, where we were, we could see the ring. I mean, we weren't like right up close to it or whatever, but. You know, you don't need to be when there's screens and everything everywhere. You're in the atmosphere of it. The atmosphere was wild, yeah. There was some you know? great was singing and shouting. and right. Football chants. Yeah. Um, the Cardiff weekend is, as a whole is something we will have to talk about in more detail. But the weekend in Cardiff for others was not great. Um, WrestleFest was a fiasco. And I felt sorry for a lot of people that paid to see some of these wrestlers and stuff when we, you know, bump into people in the middle of the street at two in the morning. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> and this is the other thing as well. Something that I, I'm not a fan of is when people will put up a picture and we saw it all weekend. Oh, I just bumped into so-and-so. It's because you were camped outside their fucking hotel. Mm-hmm. Stop being creepy. Don't. Don't be creepy and hang outside their hotels. Like, don't do that. Like, oh, I bumped into so, so. Yeah, because you paid for it. Like, so much sweeter when you just randomly actually bump into them. Um. Yeah. I mean, it it, it is. I mean, it's the luck of the draw, ain't it? You know. Yeah. Or well, when um, when they're also possibly drinking. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, or I on mean, something. Yeah, and then pull out a great match the next night. Oh know? man, really good. Yeah. Like, but yeah, the WrestleFest thing that came up is something we we kept our eye on over the weekend because we saw the queue when we walked past the nightclub it was being held in, and we yeah. knew it was going to be a shit show from then from the minute we walked past it. Yeah, I mean, we we'd just gone out for like some brunch or whatever in it, and then we we walked past and just see this huge queue. And we're like, "What's that queue for?" Oh, there you go, WrestleFest. Yeah, the um, you know, and. Uh, Mickey James and Nick Aldis have said that they will send out autographs, or if anyone's They'll at the honour one... any year autographs that were paid for that were, yeah, yeah, that's you know, that's brilliant. That is, you know, so, so good. Fair play to um Magnus and uh Mickey James. I'll call him Magnus because he was that in TNA when the, the, the glory years, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like I said, we will definitely have more on the Cardiff weekend. I think we do need to link up with the man also with us at the time. Big up yourself, Mr. Matt. Cactus Matt. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm still feeling it. I'm still pretty tired. Same, same dude. I like mean, I, 
I, I went to football last night as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it football when they're not playing, but you know. <laughs> but I went, I went flipping, come back from Cardiff. Uh, when did we get back? Sunday. Yes, Sunday um, afternoon. And then Wednesday went. Yesterday went to the football. I'm still. I'm feeling. I mean, we couldn't have done an. In, we couldn't have done a review of it on the Sunday or the Monday because I'd lost my voice. Well, I don't know what happened. Saturday but... night, yeah. Chris's voice was. Uh... Gone. Dis- disappearing. Yeah, it was. It was literally like the whole weekend. I was just sucking on strips. I was. Never seen anyone scream that loud for Mad Cat Moss in my life, mate. It was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was. It, it was a. It was a mad weekend, bro. But um, yeah. But now, obviously, the voice is back. Um, and now you have to listen to it. Unfortunately. Yeah, that's a. Hey, it's a treat for everyone. Of course it is. How am I? So, do we hit the hit the wrap up on this? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, there's not really much more to say apart from it's an absolute shit show, and someone's got to take control. And if not, we will we will be watching. Um, you Are you know, volunteering to take the reins, dude? I would, you know, I you've, you've I, wanted you've wanted to run a wrestling company for a while, haven't you? I would happily <laughs> because I know you know anyone with half a brain cell and half a bollock knows what needs to be done. It, they need to be reined in. You can't have wrestlers booking themselves. You can't have, you know, no structure. You need to have, you know, you've got to find the happy medium. A lot of people say with WWE that it's too structured or, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, but some people thrive when you say, right, this is your promo, you know. Do do this promo, but put a little spin on it or whatever. Yeah. Other people thrive when you say, right, here's your bullet points. Do your promo. You know, you can't treat everybody the same. Some people you can let them have a little bit of free reign to do whatever they do because that's what the character needs. You know, you couldn't have written a scripted promo really for The Rock or for Stone Cold or for anyone. But some people they they need it. You know, we're go- we're gonna. We're gonna get hungry and forget our manners. Forget you know? our manners, yeah. That is, you know, uh, it's, the beard's it's, coming in strong there. I can yeah, see. Yeah, mate. You know, so it, some people need to write stuff down and have the bullet points or whatever. You know, but in AEW, the promos generally are not good. Um, which is why, and uh, an average one like Moxley's will stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, yeah, I would happily take the reins um, and I would get other people in doing stuff. So, right, this is like, but actually let them do it because Tony Khan's not letting, they're saying, oh, right, you're head of this or head of that or head of the other. But it's in name only because he's still ultimately signing off on everything. And he's, but it's not just signing off on everything. Like everyone said, Vincent McMahon was a control freak, but he wasn't producing matches, was he? He wasn't booking finishes. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So who's the power freak? Who's the control freak? More so, Vince McMahon or Tony Khan? Well, Vince had expert producers and road agents to do these things. Absolutely. You know. So, you know. And though some of those road agents are in AEW. Yeah. Which is which makes it worse. Makes yeah. it makes it more baffling that it can't work that way. Because Tony Khan wants to do everything. You have to make it feel like it's Tony's idea. That's how yeah. I think it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Steer him that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, so, no, it's a, it's, it's a shit show and it's not going to stop until drastic things happen at the end of the day. But we'll just keep on observing. That we will. So before we go, we need to get to our cheap plug section. Yeah. Uh, Surf shop. Absolutely. 83% off. Plus three free months. There we go. Um, by using the code Grapple. Yep. In uh, the link will be in the description. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's with that will be keep you totally protected whilst you are out and about with a VPN, and it also has antivirus software. So, what are you doing? Why why haven't you got it yet? It's got antivirus software, so it will protect your locker room against CM Punk. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, <laughs> so thank you to Surfshark. Surfshark. Um, thank you. Um, one more cheap plug before I before we move on. Yeah. 
Adventures with Mr. and Mrs. B. If you like listening to me, then you also like listening to me and my wife. <laughs> we uh, we talk about all sorts. We eat random stuff. We have a lot of fun. We just chat basically for 20 minutes at a time on our on that channel. Go and check it out if you haven't. I'm hoping that we can get a little something in there as well. Slap their on the bells. Bottom. Yeah, come and slap my bell. Don't slap my missus' bell, please. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. That's for that's for the OnlyFans. That's, that's right. And we <laughs> I, don't, will, I don't have one. So. We will have an OnlyFans on, on this one probably soon. Oh, yeah. You know. He's going to get his lizard out. I might, but that's the thing. I might actually get my lizard out. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> so, we're not finished with the cheek plugs because Chris is going to tell us where you can find us if you're not watching us on YouTube. If you're not watching us on YouTube, which you should be, because you get to see what's going on. We put stuff on the screen. You get to see our faces, like picture of the lizard and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, picture of um us and. Uh, riddle and whatnot, you know, shit, cool shit like that. But if you're not on YouTube, you can catch us on Podbean, Spotify, Deezer, Castbox, Listen Notes, um, Amazon Podcast, Google Podcasts, every other podcast platform available. You can find us on there. That was good. Um, you can also find us on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Chat Grapple Pops. Lots of content being shared and uploaded recently. And obviously there's the YouTube shorts that are going wild. Thank you so much for anyone that's listening or watching right now that's checking those out because, hell, one day, you never know, we might even get some of that YouTube money. You, um, and that's the thing. We don't want your money. We've never said did. this day one. We never did. We want no Patreon. Oh, actually, shout out to the, our man Lee that we Yes, met in shout out to Lee. <laughs> um, yes, who did ask us about Patreon, and we made sure we told him that that is not something we are interested in. We are not looking to set up a paywall so people can listen to our stuff, you know, a minute early or something like that. It's just not what we're doing. But shout out to Lee. But we, yeah, um... sh shout out to Lee for offering Chris that chair for like a grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to buy people's chairs off them and people weren't having it. People were telling me basically to fuck off. Um, but Lee said, yeah, yeah, you can have it, but you've got to pay me loads of money. And I don't blame the geezer because no. a lot of people paid a lot of money for them tickets. Um, so yeah, shout out to Lee. Big up yourself, mate. Thank you for subscribing and listening. Thoroughly nice bloke. We had a chat on the way back to the apartments um from the event from and, yeah from um, yeah to Pallet stadium yeah it's very cool yeah mate nice good stuff so we shall say goodbye for now um thank you for watching thank you for listening thank you for joining us and being a part of this we we really do enjoy it we really do love you guys for being a part of this as well we you are our wonderful friends and we cannot thank you enough Let's jump out. I'm JB. Right next to me on the video anyway is the best Chris in all of wrestling podcasts. Boom. And any other Chris in wrestling podcasts, take that as whatever you want. I don't care. Um, also, very just quickly, um, I know it's the end of the show, but um, we have had the Queen die today while we were on the air. We so, um, you know, obviously sad news. And also this week... Um, battle rapper Pat Stay. So one of my, I love rap music. I love battle rap. I've, I've fucking grown up listening to battles and Pat Stay was one of the best taken far too early, stabbed in his hometown, 36 or whatever years old. So rest in peace to Pat Stay. And um, you might even see me rap on the channel. We might do a little, another theme tune, um, you know, for the, for the show, but yeah, it's been a, it's a weird week, but we, are still here we're still going and we are going to keep doing what we're doing so shout out to my main man jb though you know keeping it going keeping us moving and uh stopping the segways oh, from going too far wide i could not love wrestling more at the moment it's been <laughs> such a great week oh like, there's re loads weekend of wise on. yeah like it's, it's been great from stuff. watching wrestling you know chatting about wrestling being in the whole being in the bars and all that where's wrestling fans yeah being up but 
one o'clock watching SmackDown in a pub, like <laughs> all of that stuff. Yeah, couldn't have watched him more right now. Shout, shout out, shout out to uh, Cactus Matt who was um, shouting to Shayna Baszler to smash uh, Liv Morgan's face in yeah. at, at two in the morning in a in a bar in Cardiff. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> so, guys, we will see you soon. We we obviously are trying to figure out our plan to get something out again. But keep your eye out for the shorts because they they're always coming. Take care, guys. We will see you soon.